John chapter 8, John chapter 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when uh, they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, or where I'm going. In other words, I know from where I came from and where I am going. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is, written, uh, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. That is, his, the hour of his crucifixion had not yet come. We know that this was the main purpose that he left heaven's glory for, to come down to this earth, not only to live the perfect life upon earth, but die the perfect death upon, uh, upon earth as well. That death that would be the sacrificial death for your sins and for mine. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You and I have to realize this first up, that we are sinners in the sight of the Lord. We need salvation for those sins. We need forgiveness for those sins. We need to have salvation so that we don't go down to that terrible place called hell. God does not want us to go there. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is He your Saviour? Remember the story we've just read concerning uh, this woman that was taken in adultery in the very act. The Lord Jesus Christ said, what did He say? He said, He that is without sin. Um... He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. You know, none of us can say that we're without sin. 
For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We're all in the same boat. And all our righteousnesses, all the best things that we can offer unto God, are only filthy rags in his sight. He's not interested in them at all. They're just fit for the dunghill. They're fit for the rubbish. We must understand that all our works of righteousness count for absolutely nothing, zero, zero, in the sight of God. We need to have the righteousness of God to be in heaven. And the only way to have that righteousness is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross of Calvary. Why? Because he loved you and I so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life that can only come through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Yes, his hour had not yet come. The hour of his crucifixion had not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, or where I go, ye cannot come. There is no way we can be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and his wonderful sacrifice upon the cross and our right response to that. You see, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself because he saith, whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Proving the fact that before he came down to earth, he was in heaven. He's the eternal self-existent one. Knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. What a wonderful saviour I have. And I want to commend him unto you this morning that he would become your saviour. Ye are from of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am, or I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they uh, unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, meaning crucified him on the cross, then shall ye know that I am, or I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. And as he, uh, as he spake these words, many believed on him. I wonder, are you prepared to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? And believing, receive everlasting life. That's what it takes. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. If you will come in repentance this morning, acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner before the God of heaven, just change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This can be yours this morning. You can be at peace with God. The Bible says, uh, Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So salvation can be yours this morning. You can have peace through the blood of his cross. His precious blood had to be shed that day upon the cross of Calvary. In whom we have redemption through his blood even. The forgiveness of sins. How does this find you this morning? If you were to die right now, where would you be? It's time we thought about eternity. We need to consider these things. These things are eternal. It's not so much of what sort of fun we can have on this earth and all the rest of it, because all these things will just, they're just like froth and bubble. They're just like 
You know those crunchy chips that you get from the supermarket? They're just nothing, no sustenance in them whatsoever. It's all junk food, really. We need to understand, we need something more than just this normal food that we get from the shop. We need spiritual and eternal food. And that spiritual food is found alone in the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He's willing and able to save you this morning. Will you come, acknowledging your sinful condition before him, and then receiving him as your Saviour. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.
that came forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You see, the devil invented lies. He's the father of lies, and he's seeking to deceive you. That you would not come to Jesus Christ and receive forgiveness for your sins. There's only forgiveness found in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, the Son of the living God who died on the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried, but praise God, the third day He rose again according to the Scriptures. Where does that find you? Are you a child of God this afternoon? Are you heading to heaven? The only way you can be in heaven is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a demon? Jesus answered, I have not a demon, but I honour my Father, and ye do dishonour me. And I seek not mine own glory, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honour myself, my honour is nothing. It is my Father that honoureth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Now I am is a divine title of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. He's the self-existent one. The Lord Jesus Christ did not begin to exist when he was born of Mary upon this earth. Oh no, he's the eternal one. The one that inhabits eternity. And he's the one that desires to be your saviour this afternoon. I wonder what will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ. You see, the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. Is he your saviour this afternoon? You need to make him yours. Yes, he's the saviour of the world in the sense that God wants everyone to be saved. And God is offering salvation unto everyone. Every boy, girl, man and woman upon the face of the earth. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. The reason why he could do that is because his hour was not yet come. The hour of his crucifixion. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ left heaven's glory. And as I said before, that Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world, but is He your Saviour? You need to make Him yours personally. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation can be yours this afternoon. You can be in heaven at the moment of death if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you come to Christ this afternoon and believe on Him, receive Him as your Saviour. You know something? He's either going to be your Saviour or He's going to be your judge. You must make that decision. God wants you to be in heaven. And He cannot be in heaven apart from Jesus Christ. He's the only one, the only Saviour for us poor sinners. When we're born into this world, we're born as sinners in the sight of the Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ shed His precious blood upon the cross that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. There's no other detergent that God has for your sin and mine apart from the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. I wonder, have you received forgiveness for your sins? The only way of forgiveness is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. I want to move on now to John chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, they thought that it was a judgment of God upon this man, that he was born blind because of sin. And that's not necessarily the, necessarily the case. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When have you come unto the light of the world? That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you believed on him? Have you received him as your saviour? We need to do that because if we don't, at the moment of death, we'll be in hell. I'm here to warn you this afternoon. Free from the wrath which is to come. God is angry with the wicked every day, and yet your soul can be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life that can only come through faith? In our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross and shed his precious blood that day when he was crucified. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbours, therefore, and they which uh, before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay, and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, and wash. And I went, and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to uh, the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them, 
They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son? Do ye say, uh, was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but by what means he now seeth, we know not. Uh, who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake the parent, his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence or from where he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvellous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man is a worst to be a worshipper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, but when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. What a wonderful day in this man's life. He received his sight, he was born blind, and yet the Lord Jesus Christ was able to give him sight. Even though he was born blind, he could see. I wonder, does that describe you? Now, I'm not talking about physical blindness here. I'm talking about spiritual blindness. You and I are spiritually blind as far as God is concerned. He wants to shine upon your heart and give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, that you would turn to Christ, that you would believe on Christ this afternoon to receive forgiveness for your sins. You see, there's only one way of forgiveness, that is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and your right response to that. You can either receive Christ or you can reject Him. It's up to you. But let me remind you, if you do reject Christ, you'll end up dying and going down to hell and God does not want you to go down to hell. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace.